What we see here is the effect of vibration on a specific substance, lycopodium powder, or spores of the club moss. We have strewn it uniformly on a diaphragm of stretched paper with a diameter of about 30 centimeters, which we now excite by vibration. This causes the powder to clump. We can see many small clumps, many small globular piles, and the more intense the vibration, the more piles there are. If the note is louder, that is to say, if the amplitude is increased, these masses of powder move to the center and make a kind of dust cloud there. An ever wider area of powder is affected and more and more of these globules are formed. They are not at rest, but in a state of continuous motion. We can see a large circular shape forming in the middle and continuously moving. Sometimes it is whipped up into a cloud, as it is now, and sometimes it reverts to the solid dust particle form. These changes are caused by the differences in the intensity of the tone, that is, by the different amplitudes. In this experiment, the frequency, that is to say, the number of vibrations per second, is the same. And now we see the circular form and everything in a definite pattern of movement. We can see how the material rises up in the middle and is transported to the periphery. This pile of dust this heap of particles, is in a process of convection. The material travels inwards from the edge along the bottom of the pile, rises up in the middle, and is then carried back to the periphery. Even if the intensity of the vibration changes, there is still a whole system of radial circulation. At certain frequencies, or with certain tones, an extraordinarily interesting phenomenon is seen. Watch. We see two regularly and continuously rotating areas at either end of a diameter, going round and round like weathercocks. This is the expression of a rotating wave motion. We can see they are rotating in an anti-clockwise direction. We now switch to a different frequency and produce the same phenomenon, but this time in a clockwise direction because the frequency is different. If we go back to the previous frequency, we have the same phenomenon again in an anti-clockwise direction. Notice that this rotary movement does not affect the circulation or convection in the least. Now we can excite the same material with different tones all the way through the frequency band. Now by changing the amplitude, that is, changing the volume of the tone, we can bring about a very interesting phenomenon. The tone is the same, but we introduce a burst, an amplitude burst, and every time we do so, it integrates the whole situation.
These dynamic events now lead to a phenomenon of exceptional interest. You must realize that the same diaphragm and the same powder are used, but that the tones are different. Here we have a flow pattern. This means that where we had a structural pattern before, we now have a violent dynamic one. A current is formed and the powder rushes along in the flow path, leaving the black patches of the diaphragm completely free of powder. Everything is driven into the flow path by the vibration. We add more and more material. But the result is not confusion or chaos. Instead, everything falls into place in the strict flow pattern. A point to notice about all these phenomena is that they can be reproduced at any time, that the factors and conditions of the experiment are known with accuracy. We go on throwing in powder, and every time this attractive and clearly defined flow pattern keeps on emerging from the vibrational field. It is a circulatory system without walls. The walls are, so to speak, the area of vibration. The area of vibration provides the constraint which gives shape to the circulatory flow. Different flow patterns are formed at different frequencies.